Okay, Mr. Solai. Sir, one second, please speak. Okay. Mm. डॉक्टर <laughs> जी लक्ष्मीपति राइट लक्ष्मीपति मिस्टर रवि फाउंडर ऑफ वॉनेबल कल्चर सेंटर डॉक्टर वी वी सुब्रमण्यन वी वी एस प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ वॉनेबल कल्चर सेंटर मेंबर्स ऑफ वॉनेबल टीम डॉक्टर्स लॉयर्स डिग्नेटरीज पेशेंट्स हैव जॉइन पेशेंटली ऑनलाइन to listen to this great man informative interesting and illuminating speech the prominent physician humorist from coimbatore i am happy to say that i know dr lakshmi pati for last over 30 years he did this mbbs from stanley medical college the then madras and his teachers were Recently passed away, Doctor K. V. Thiruvengala, Doctor C. R. R. Pillai, Doctor Yen Vaidyanatha Iyer, Doctor Chinnak Swami, Swami in Europe, is still living in Chennai. Then he had had his M. D. from All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. Then he went to went abroad, took M. R. C. P. F. R. C. P. Yes, I speak to specialist in geriatrics, and uh, is a renowned physician in Coimbatore. Very good in diagnosis, and uh, he used to mingle humor with his. He has written some good books on medicine for for medical people, medical professionals, and also to uh, common people. Who wants to have some humor? That is, he has, he has written one book called Half Hour Therapy. We will make you half hour. The other one is Cynical Dictionary. Cynical Dictionary. Textbook of Cynical Medicine. Cynical Medicine. And then a book on medicine. Table top books for book for out for outpatient management. Table top guide to outpatient management. Then care of the medical people. Then he has written several highly popular books on medical issues for doctors and the general public that are available on Amazon. The title includes "Hafa Therapy," with a foreword from late Mr. Kushan Singh, delights of dementia and other essays. Dictionary of clinical clinical medicine. I already told you. Post therapy, laughing through medical specialties, and how to be middle class and happy. This last book, the foreword was given by Mr. Shashi Tharoor MP. Dr. Shree Badi has specialized in the diseases of old age, geriatrics, and is one of the senior geriatrics in India. But his practice was not limited to the old age group at all. Since a year, he sees he sees only limited patients in consulting format, and mostly those with limited lifespan. That is Dr. Rashmi Duri. To quote few of his humorous quotable quotes, he differentiates between a humorologist and a humorist. A humorologist. Try to discover why people laugh, whereas the humorist tries to discover why they are not laughing. Physician, 
the definition given by for physics is a man who forces like a savan but charges like a plumber wonderful old age old age is like a burger he takes away all the goodies and leaves you or leaves you with the rubbish then what is meant by medical practice when doctors went on strike way back in 1976 the local death rate fell by 40% the statement given by rose burjman then she got her good looks from her father another anecdote she is a plastic surgeon she got her good looks from her father who is a plastic surgeon then regarding orthodontist she says brilliant philium and billium orthodontist dentist brilliant philium and billium then menopausal syndrome what is menopausal syndrome 99% desperation and 1% perspiration i would like to quote the learned poet ravi he says mudumayin kanivai kanivai nesikkirai the learned poet says mudumayin kanivai nesikkirai irundalum iranaiy than naan yaasikkirai nesithal yaasith இளமையிலிருந்து முதுமையை நுழைய இருமுறை நானும் யோசிக்கிறேன் முதுமையின் கனிவை நேசிக்கிறேன் இருந்தாலும் இளமையைத்தான் யாசிக்கிறேன் இளமையிலிருந்து முதுமையில் நுழைய இருமுறை நானும் யோசிக்கிறேன் he is an active rotarian and he was the president of kaibatur indian medical association mm. and uh, he is a doctor but i can say that he is a doctor doctor i would like to conclude vishnubadi is equal to allopathy plus shomuropathy all up to dr vishnubadi mm. ஆர்கனைசேஷன் இஸ் ஏபிள் டு போஸ்ட் யூ டுடே and we are here to listen to you and as uh, aptly put it by our good friend dr rajaram uh, a doctor to be a humorist is a great challenge because a doctor is one who always sees the despair in other others only people in despair and pain come to you and uh, what more uh, important is there when you give a humor in term and uh, give a solace to them so we are looking forward to listen to you we all welcome you please Take your pleasure and our pleasure along with your humor and spread your ideas. Thank you very much. Welcome, sir. Start, sir. Okay. Founder, President, Mr. Ravi, Professor Raja Ram, Mr. Vivas, distinguished members of one of the one. and part in my guest ladies and gentlemen i would like to thank my good friend very agreeable patient and a promoter of my extra curricular diversions professor raja ram of palgar for uh, his very kind invitation to me to address the vanavil one part my distinguished members this evening my thanks are also due to mr ravi the founder an eminent senior advocate of the madras high court and the supreme court and uh, the supreme court and letting me into this sandip to hopefully promote sindip and let me express my gratitude to raja ram for introducing me in such effusive terms i mean it gets a little embarrassing when somebody sort of showers so much praise on you but anyway i have a good consolation in that my wife is here with me 
and she kept on looking at me, wondering whether I am being referred to all the time. And uh, I actually wonder, wondered whether uh, uh, at one point I should give my talk in Tamil because uh, uh, Raja Ram is a professor and a very learned man in Tamil literature and Tamil uh, 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 epics. But you know, after seeing the title of the association, I got a little nervous because I thought maybe there are going to be too many Tamil scholars and uh, that, that was a little problem. And so I have decided that I speak in Tamil. I am glad to be able to talk uh, to a literary group with a beautiful, provoking motto. Shandipom, Sindipom, an open invitation to like-minded people to get together, to exchange ideas, to enrich their knowledge. And of a, over a great range of topics, as has been suggested by the Vanaville in the title, with a positive and proactive motto like that. And I, as I understand, a number of illustrious uh, scholars in Tamil are all members. I'm sure they'll give great guidance. I have no doubt this group is going to have a great future and in course of time, get national, international firm. Now, when discussing with Mr. Raja Ram, uh, I heard about what the various people have spoken about and I was delighted that I have been invited to address such a very august gathering here this evening. I said I will talk in only in English because my Tamil at best is a conversation style, you know. And so that's you and I speak all the time with many words in slang format. And sadly, it gets worse when I struggle to polish it up because my background Tamil is very poor. I mean, it may be okay to amuse my listeners with a little humor, some things that will make you smile and laugh, but it will amount to disrespect should I sort of talk to you in Tamil and sort of not handle it properly. So with your permission, I will speak in English. I assure you, um, my decision is something for which you have much to thank me for. I would have loved to meet you, many of you, in physical form like in the happy pro pre-COVID days, and uh, which I always found a greatly enriching experience, meeting people in the flesh and discussing with them various things. It's a pity that this has to be a virtual meet of the Zoom kind, with all the participants reduced, reduced to two dimensions on the screen, you know, muted and pasted on, uh, on the screen, depriving all the warmth and spirit that are inherent in any literary event. Whether we like it or not, it, despite of the great advances in electronic wizardry and magic, with all the faces of one's audience are spread across the screen with uh, their faces across the screen like a photo album. I have a feeling that I'm talking to a photo album, which you have agreed with me, is not very inspiring or very not creative to somebody who likes to give speeches to warm, receptive audiences, especially <laughs> humor. Then it's, you find it's all the more important. I get some idea of the response of the audience now that I'm not getting this. But that doesn't matter. So I'm going to talk today on uh, the subject of uh, joys of aging, or in other practical terms, it is a talk on how to be happy though a senior citizen. How to be happy though a senior citizen, because that of course gives the innuendo that to be a senior citizen, people feel sad. <coughs> And I would like to dispel that idea that to be old is to be unhappy. That's an idea I want to dispel and I'll try and lay solid grounds for that. Now, broadly, I will talk about how more people are living today to be old than any time in human history. In fact, there are more people over the age of 60 living today, just at this point in time, than people who have lived to the age of 60, right from the time man came off the trees. So million years, they've never lived to be at this age. So if you add them all, people who live to be 60, 70, 80 and all, you still won't get the figure that you will get of the number of people living at the age of 60 today. And uh, I'll tell also touch upon the reasons why this is so, and the reason why the vital subject of human uh, 
that's, that's I mean, uh, this vital subject of human aging has somehow or the other been uh, brought, brought to the forefront, front forefront of uh, all literature, human thinking, and everything, so that it will be of great help to us. Now, the second thing is the thought of getting old strikes a fear in human minds. You may or more or may not know, but significantly, the fear was not so intense earlier on, especially in the uh, with the groups which have very ancient heritage. They always revered the old, old people and they continue to revere old people. The Chinese, for example, or India, for example, or if you take Japan, they have rever great reverence for old people to things which are great ancient civilizations. Why is it so? For various reasons. One reason could be that uh, you know, the old people were repository. They were the, the Google reference in the olden days. They lived through fire, flood, famine, and all kinds of uh, illnesses and all that in the community. And only a few of them survived. And so they had a repository of knowledge. And so some suddenly there was an epidemic of smallpox, an epidemic of cholera, an epidemic of plague. What is to be done? There's no reference. There's no literature, no books, nothing. And so you had to go to the old man and ask him, what did you do when the plague visited Mysore in 1921? He will know because he has lived through the time. And so there was a lot of respect for these people and it continued even after the fact that uh, you got Google and Britannia and Sevastopedia. And so that is one of the reasons. And uh, so it's very important that we try have the right attitude to the change and make an appropriate adaptation to the change. Many senior people in the audience will recall that about 30, 40 years ago, when you went to a reception, when you went to a wedding, when you sat in some function at home. You know, you, what you'll have, let us say there are about 50 people sitting, right in the front chair, there'll be two or three elderly people, you know, with a walking stick by the side and uh, coughing incessantly and so soda bath, soda glass, as they call it, ice cube glasses, due to old type of cataract operation. And uh, they'll be, you know, coughing and breathing with difficulty. And, but there'll be the center of attraction. Many people will come, Tata, Vanakam, Tata, Namaskaram, Pandre, Ashirvad, Pandre, Modi, this is my grandson, this is my granddaughter, all the time. And they used to enjoy this and blessing them constantly and have a good time, basically. But today, today, if you go and sit to one of these places where many old people are there, let's say, many, some function is going on and you find today a similar function, you will find the whole row of Tatas sitting with their parties. In the olden days, the parties will be the lady. And all the parties will be sitting and they are all, you will find no sticks, nothing. And they are quite fit. And they are cheerful. They are smiling. They are in their 70s. They are in their 80s. And the water they are discussing. They are discussing their green card, breakfast arrangement in retirement homes, and then acceptable cholesterol values in the world today. How Lufthansa sells better breakfast than British Air India flight. And how an Air India flight was delayed one day. One of the old fellows was telling me. In those days when he was flying with Air India, once I believe the flight was delayed because they had not got the ear plugs. And so that had not the air, not reached the Air India office. So two hours later they started. But today they won't tolerate any such delay by the planes. And then how Kamala Harris, somebody will say, is in a way a distant relative, you know, my closest friend's aunt, she was. In a way, so on. So claims to some closeness to VIPs of the world, and how somebody says, I have, how he has heard that his nephew Mukesh working in for Microsoft in Dallas has divorced his Mexican wife because every day she has to have enchiladas every morning for breakfast. The smell made him nauseated. Things like that, you no know, discussing something pretty modern, pretty update, and pretty interesting. That's what the old people do, because as I said. 10 to 25 percent of the population, depending on which comfortable country you are talking about. I'm not talking of some very poor kind of countries in other continents, but if you go to countries where they have a standard of living, 10 to 25 percent of the people are over the age of 60. In India, for example, it is nearly about 10 to 15 percent of people over the age of 62, 65. And so, this is a, why this, how has this happened? It has happened because man started putting science to work in a wide variety of fields, including medicine, engineering in its amazing variety, agriculture, 
transportation, travel, cooking, sanitation, communication, everything advanced. Everything advanced and they made sure these advances made man's life, man's life healthier, happier, better nourished. May made sure that human beings enjoyed better quality of life at home and at work, enjoyed greater leisure. They could you know, widen the intellectual horizons by means of these uh, tremendous uh, things that have come on in our media and uh, communications. And so the intellectual horizons got wider and they got protected, better protected from natural disorders. My father used to tell me that uh, in the olden days, when there's a cholera epidemic in some kind of a village close to a Kaveri bank or something, or village that is dependent on some pond, you will find nearly 25, 30% of the population will die. If there's a plague, 20, 30% will die. If there's a smallpox epidemic, you will find that 30, 40 people to 20% will die, another 20% will be pox for life. All this now have been thought, have been uh, sort of prevented. And so we find we are all able to live healthier lives. And science has advanced at an amazing speed over a couple of centuries. Only 10 in the Industrial Revolution might have come three to four centuries ago. But science advanced in practical terms happened only over the past two centuries. And I am always proud to say that uh, in my lifetime, over 80 years, I found that uh, extraordinary things are happening, not only in the field of medicine. I mean, I when I started, uh, finished my medical college, I found mostly we were dealing with mixtures and all. You go to Stanley Medical College, the second biggest hospital in Chennai. We will have mixtures and things like that, you know, anti phlogist and all kinds of things. And the antibiotics were just coming into the world. And so we had so much uh, uh, things which are all by simply hearsay and uh, without any evidence. But now, imagine, look at the things I narrate to you just so that you can think with me. Look at the things we have today which have made a tremendous and meaningful addition to our lives TV, cell phone, there were no credit cards. No bullet trains, no supersonic jets, no lenses, no contact lenses, no ballpoint pens, no laser beams, no air conditioners, no dishwashers, no pizza hut in our sperm, no frozen foods, no laparoscopic surgery, no intensive care, no transplant, no MRI, no CT, no home, home printer. Imagine what all these are making to our lives today. None of these is there. And so naturally, all these making our life more comfortable with famines being a thing of the past and with food being transported across and with all this communication, with travel and all getting easier, is smarter, you find man's quality of life has gone up tremendously as also his quantity of life. And so what is the, in effect, what it has done is, many of you may not know this, I only sort of know as a geriatrician. It is, it is believed now that by virtue of all these advances, a man's life, roughly in the more comfortable countries of the world has gone up by 25 years. So my grandfather retired at the age of 55, 60. Only the president of India went on till 70. All the others are down at 60, 55, 60. But now today, if you retire somebody at the age of 60, and he probably will go up to 80, 85. Simply imagine the bonus that you suddenly got Whatever you call it, you call me old man, young man, whatever you call me. This is a second breath of life into people who are very normal and very active. And they find that they have been given a bonus, bonus boom in living. And so that is it. So I remember in this context when uh, uh, I was a uh, PSA school student, I was uh, listening to one uh, uh, Poet, patriot, speaker, orator, cinema man, Chin and Namale. I'm sure many of the senior people here will know about him. He was an absolutely brilliant speaker. Brilliant speaker. And uh, he. I, I, just if you'll excuse me, I'll get that little information. Hold on. Hold on. Sorry. Chapter. Our speech is cut
Because this is something I don't remember. I don't want to mess it up. And so Chinna Namre, he was telling that uh, um, in some kind of a, what should I say, in um, some kind of limerick form in Tamil. Patlila pada pada pu, iru dale iru ma pu, muppu dale muruk, naapu dale naatam, ambu dale ekam, arivu dale thukam, arivu dale thukam. So quickly pada pada pu, hyperactive child, and then iru dale iru ma pu. You know he thinks he is now the king of the world. Muppu dale muruk, he is making some money also. At the same time he is probably getting married and he is feeling very uh, sort of comfortable and very. What should I say? Very ill. Naapadala naatam. Then he became a little shaky about his own capabilities. Ambadala atam. Arivadala yekam. Yedivadala thukam. That's what they said. Today, I think it cannot apply. If Sinna Anamale was alive today, he will say, Patala patapata, irubadala iruma, pupadala murukku, naapadala naatam. And all that will be there. Ambadala adikam. Because this is the real prime of life. He is a chief managing editor, or he is managing director. He is the professor of medicine, whatever it is. Ambadala adikam, arivudala angioplasty, yedivudala arthroplasty. He is getting into problems with all these things. Very faint living. Arivudala arthroplasty, his joints are getting worn out, but he is getting it repaired. Enbadala chemotherapy, thunnurla chemotherapy. That means he is cremate. Life has come to an end. And so, patala, படபடப்பு இருபதுல இருமா முப்பதுல முறுக்கு நாற்பதுல நாட்டம் ஐம்பதுல ஆட்டம் அறுபதுல ஏக்கம் எழுபதுல தூக்கம் ஐம்பதுல ஆதிக்கம் அறுபதுல ஆன்ஜியோ பிளாஸ்டி எழுபதுல ஆத்ரோ பிளாஸ்டி எண்பதுல கீமோ தெரப்பி தொண்ணூறுல கிரீமோ தெரப்பி அண்ட் சோ திஸ் இஸ் வாட் இஸ் இன் பிராக்டிகல் சோ யூ ஃபைன் திஸ் ஏஜ் ஏஜிங் ஹேஸ் பிகம் எ மேட்டர் ஆஃப் லைஃப் ஐ மீன் மேட்டர் ஆஃப் ஃபேக்ட் நவர் டேஸ் அண்ட் வி ஆல் கெட் வி ஓல் தெர் ஆர் த்ரீ ஃபியர்ஸ் all human beings have the major fears are of course fear of death second is fear of sickness because both these two are uncertain because fear of death means we don't know what happening of death patients have asked me doctor some old people thinking they are going to die soon ask me doctor if shower ko edha romba vali ella irukuma they will say so i mean i, I to tell them na thoruka saaga illa theriyadhu idea illa பட் நத்திங் இல்லை நான் பார்த்ததுல எல்லாரும் ரொம்ப பீஸ்ஃபுல்லாக தான் இருக்கா உங்களுக்கு அதை பற்றி ஏன் யோசனை யோசனை பண்ணுறீங்க இன்னும் ஒரு நெக்ஸ்ட் இயர் யோசனை பண்ணலாம் ஜஸ்ட் சுச்சி அதிகமாக புரியும் பிகாஸ் தட் இஸ் நோ பிடி ஓல்ட் அனஃப் பட் ஹி டசன் திங்க் ஹி சம் மோர் அதர் கெட் ஒன் மோர் இயர் சம் கொஷின் இஸ் ஏ காலேஜ் சார் லீவ் ஃபார் ஒன் மோர் இயர் அண்ட் ஸோ அண்ட் ஃபியர் ஆஃப் சிக்னஸ் இஸ் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்டபிள் பிகாஸ் நாட் ஓன்லி டஸ் இட் டிசேபிள் யூ யூ டிஸ்ட்ரெஸ் ட்ரெட்டர் யூ டெத் and you find it economically it breaks you down it makes your family down and it's terrible thing to have fear because you don't know where the outcome is and so that is the sad thing but the, the third thing is fear of old age on the surface it looks very paradoxical that uh, nobody wants to die yeah, to die but nobody wants to get old <laughs> they even understand possibly something like my patients they tell me sir covid vana sir ipdi ana vaccination potu mathi I mean, this cannot happen. Isn't it? One is inescapable if you want to get to the second. And uh, between dying, in this matter of choosing between dying and living through old age, if given an option, suppose I ask some patient, make up your mind, do you want to die or do you want to be lived to old age? All of them will say, no, no, old age. Maybe a little bit of difficulty here and there, but I think it should be fine. Yeah, I can like, live to the old age. Now, when you get old, how we should to be made joyful and very enjoyable is it possible you may tell me how we you say is possible to be old man and a happy man you can be you can be so uh, i tell you two things are the things that are most difficult to overcome not difficult to overcome as much as has to be they have to be understood and given the proper bearing in your mind and the answers form one of course are the health issues health issues are something that have to be some or the other tackle because as you get older your protoplasm you are working on 70% of your protoplasm and so naturally things are going to be shaken up a bit and so it will have to be tackled in a way i will tell you presently the second which is more significant and more interesting and what many people don't think about is ageism the prejudice widely prevalent blanket prejudice against a person who has crossed 
on just the account of being old man. Total disregard to the person's merit. Like, you know, it is some kind of a prejudice like racism, feminism, chauvinism, all this. This is ageism. And so we all suffer. When we get old, you find this ageism is something perceptible in some of the more Western countries. And you find it's perceptible even otherwise. And uh, negative attributes are heaped on the man because he's old. Simply, Muddha Kutyach, the rice arch, if it's not a this would appear to be something which is inescapable. And so this ageism is something that shakes all of us right to the depth of our being. I can tell you that. Like, I, these are the ages, ideas of the stereotyped old person. He is uh, incapable of holding a responsible job. Cannot learn new things. He cannot think clearly. You know, because of the guy. Why is clearer? And his memory is not anything like it should be, it should be there. And uh, it's not possible to give him a lot of responsibility. But so much to know. Why is and like that, you know, as if uh, bias itself is a curse, and so you automatically, naturally, automatically expect a deterioration. Need support for his father. Father told he needs some walking, and uh, our uh, he old people cannot see properly, cannot hear properly. This is a stereotype. Many people don't have any of these problems at all. For example, you must, I must, I have seen so much so often when a patient is old. Let us say maybe she has sprained her leg, or knee had some contusion, the knee file lying down. And having some problem, then people will come and say, Party, empty your girl. She assume that his party is there. She's not. And she gets sometimes repulsed by the fact that because he's party, she is, or they'll come very closely and say, Poor man, I'll get home. If you get Talal in Nazi, Nalari, I should have to go. You see, they assume that she's somewhere very close to death. So this attitude, this is all born out of ageism. That somebody is old, so somebody is abnormal. Some facets of his full personality have been eroded. This is something that especially happens in old Western countries with, with the old civilization, which is unfortunate. In Western countries, the people live to be very old and people look, they look for the time when they, 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 they will have freedom. The bird has flown, then you have empty nest syndrome, they call it. But many people write about that being nice because they are no more responsibility. And so you find that the, why is it like that? The best of the, any civilization should be happy that their old people are living, people are living to be old. See, that's a mark of civilization. As a matter of fact, the Mudara Kutaratana civilization, if a community is taking care of its elderly, it is taking care of the young, that is a reflection of the quality of that, that community, that civilization. And so, so you, why is it not like so much in Western countries? I mean, not that they don't like their parents. You know, right? They do like their parents. They get along with them, I have no doubt. But they would rather put them in some old age home. It's unfortunate it's happening even today in India. So put them in their home and all that because they give a commercial angle to ages. These people don't work. Their numbers are increasing. They don't pay taxes. They complain all the time. They rock the hardworking man who's gone to office, come back and say, they mock the youth because of their beliefs. Maybe he's having a half a daddy in one side. They, these people will mock it. And they're sick most of the time. Use of tons of government allotted money for that. It costs a 70% of, of the National Health Service money is spent on people who are over the age of 60, 70 in England. And so this irks them. That they are paying the tax. They are supposed to be running this thing. And most of it goes to the old people. And these old people go to get in the hospital and sometimes don't have the courtesy to come back, you see. And so there's all the time this kind of basic underlying ageism. So they try not to give you jobs. And sometimes they'll employ a retired man at half his salary. And things like this happen all the time. There are so many jokes about old people losing their memory. One of my friends was telling me he goes to my doctor's friend and he goes to somebody's house. And I believe the husband is saying, so she went and then but Chamatilia was a wonder and things like that. But this man is never I was so kind, so endearing in his call for his wife. And so when she went to bring Bonda, my friend asked me, did you know every nigga? I forgot his wife's name. This you know, some some kind of a exaggeration. And uh, my father used to talk about his father. You know, he's in metallic age, silver in his hair, gold in his teeth, steel in the middle of his chest. 
because he had a bypass. Iron in his soul because he's old and got so rusted. Lead in his pants because he, he, can, he can walk. And then another joke is, my grandfather does not sleep at night very well because he's sleeping in bits and pieces all night. You know, his teeth are in a bottle by in a water. And here is, his ear is in a box. His eyes are in a case. His urine is in a bottle on a stool. And his mind is in a mist. And so on and so forth. I get to do one of the, my own jokes. <laughs> it's not to mock them. It's only tell you, how, it can be funny. How the old couple come to me and this man says, this woman says, How is it? 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 And this woman went on answering all the questions I am throwing at the husband, the patient. She said, Ma, our Gviadi and Wilk Vadi, Lavar Tamiadi. Pity our best to make a patient, I will be telling you about the girl, eh? And our best, please, opening the woman, or in him shop, she said. And then she walked over and did something, I didn't know, because she was showing her back to me. That man was sitting in the chair and she was doing something, some adjustment. And then she said, ah, I took her in my doctor. It seems she had given her denture to him. Because they have only one denture. They have two dentures, but if old man's denture does not fit. And so this woman gave her denture, you know, getting our palliative stand. So things like that happen. Some of them are amusing, I don't deny. But then this is something that uh, the danger, ageism, poses to all of us is this prejudice that we have grown with this prejudice in our own minds when we are young. So that you and I begin to think. And because you are old, our memory is failing. So no, suppose then they think we are getting dementia. Suppose you have forgotten suddenly the name of the neighbor who came. There will be some loss of memory, there is no doubt. But not to the extent that you should be mocked for it. Younger people also forget things, isn't it? The idea that his memory is not as good as it was. And so then you keep hearing, old man drive one another car, one another go. And so the man, young middle-aged son says, Papa, I don't drive the car. I'm not very confident. And this man looks at things, his hands are shaking. They are not shaking. But that he thinks his voice is gone. I know in classmate of mine, beautiful singer, and he thought his voice was gone. And things like that happen, you see. And so, this is how it happens. And the ageism, as you know, is not only in all this, but also in the fact that if you go to a cinema, if you watch a television program, you find the old people are always not there. They are not advertising cars. They are not opening fruit tires. They are not ordering pizza. They are not sort of... Uh, Having a good time in a holiday. No, all these young people. Maybe the old man paid for it. But these young people enjoying themselves. And old people don't enjoy. All right. If you even take music, for example. I mean, we are all uh, conversant with so many songs. When there's an old man, old couple, you know, at home, it's a blue home, my home. The old people sit down, joke with their children, have great you know, tata joke and chat and all that. And it goes on all the time. But then you'll find in the drama, especially in television dramas, you know, the serials. The old man is always there in the light of color. <laughs> he seems to have COVID constantly and he's a picture of dejection. All right. Can he be at least seen talking to his wife, smiling and joking? No, no. I know a song, Shivaji Ganesh is singing and he's lying on Padmini's lap. Right? I mean, you can't imagine a better situation for the old man to be happy. But what is he singing? Un ganil nir vajindal yenanjil Uriram Kotudadi Yen Kanil Pava Yenro Kanama Yenu Yenin Nadanro Unkanil Nir Vajindal. He's crying. He's laughing, isn't it? All I do think maybe he's got some disease. I'm sure his son is giving him very nice protection. That's what I'm thinking when I'm watching this. Mulil Padikayit Imaye Muda Vidadi Rukum. Pillai kulamadiyo, ennei bedamai seidadadi. See, his son is a villain. Kalam viruduhal pol, uravu ayiram bandhum yennam. Vedana nee irundai, adil nal vindu vidadirundhe. Un kannil nee vidindal. See, you are already feeling sad, crying with Shivaji Ganesha. At a time, you should be happy and smile. It's all like a poda, poga tumboda, weed very good. All this, the old man's come sad. Look at the face. And so, this is what happens. And so, this is all unfortunate. And so, what is to be the one thing I want you to know is that it has been consistently demonstrated 
consistent, different trends demonstrated that there's no correlation between age and job performance, except in those involving physical power. Suppose you have moved move 30 sharp moves here and there, physical power, then there's some. There is no proof that older workers are less productive. There's no proof they are more expensive and more rigid than younger workers. Many were that way, right? Whoever is like that in the old age, you find he was like that even in his young age. And then he knows that as he gets older, that tolerance is important, patience is important. Some fellows will only be lazy. Some fellows will always give an excuse. Some fellows will always lie. And so he tolerates them, having seen all these kinds of people in his lifetime of service. And then he find, you find he makes a better boss. He, and so you will have to hear, he uh, understands. So he knows also that if he resists obstinately, then he's going to lose his job. And so he gets adjusted. Like that's what the, this is the answer to ageism. So the correct answer is, it is time for old people like you and me and Professor to get together and control our lives and fight this injustice. Stop groveling in self-pity and let us stand united. Remember one thing basically, if you are 70 years old, you are older than 80% of population. When you are 80 years old, you have outlived 90% of the population, all your bad bosses, fellows who annoy you, fellows who say nasty letters about you, who try to do ruin your life, all packed off and you have survived them. There was some virtue sir, in you that made you survive this. So look at it positive, automatically notice it. Then I'm going to give my joys of old age, two ways I'm going to divide. One is just by virtue of being old, number of joys accrue to you. Every day is a holiday. I mean, whenever you're working hard, come home, right? I used to come home from hospital, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, feel retired. Oh, every day, every time. Now, every day is a holiday. I practice on mouth organ, I sing, and then I, I sort of try to travel as to the extent possible. I follow, do spiritual pursuits. I have I developed hobbies, and uh, I write books, as you heard, and I make new friends, continue listening learning, so on, so on, so forth. And every day is a holiday. No schedules I have to follow under my voice. is very particular. Late breakfast when I get, lack snacks throughout the day, sleep as desired, wake up whenever I want. Freedom of speech, complete. Because I can say anything and get away. I tell you a joke. And I was meet, giving a talk, presiding over a meeting in Trivandrum. And uh, something a little naughty happened in the sense that, you know, I was the chairman and so, Suddenly, the, st st the mic in the podium fade. And so one middle-aged OBG or obstetrician, she was giving a lecture, and I'm the chairman of the position seminar. And so she was standing, and then she said, uh, started speaking, the mic fade. And this happens in many meetings. And so this mic fade, and then she, the mic man came around and did something, and nothing, it didn't work. And so she looked at me and said, uh, uh, she, the mic man came and said, Sir, who will the kutu to ma? Na kutu kutu, I'll pass for her. And so he gave it to me. So I gave it to her. So she started speaking. Ladies and gentlemen, not heard. Then she looked at me and said, Dr. Lakshmipati, will you please turn me on? <laughs> then something I said, I said, surely, but are you sure your husband won't object? But he says, oh, my old man. So they laugh a lot. Nobody misunderstood me because then she, I apologized to her. She said, no, 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 it was a very great joke. I enjoyed it. So whenever you say something a little funny, please accept it because you don't mean any harm. You just want to make people laugh. And you are forgiven for lapses in memory. You know, I phoned you. Somebody will say, I phoned you up yesterday twice. I want to ring you up, but I forgot. Sorry about that. That's all. Forgiven. Because your role, make, take advantage of the myth they have created about you. And so, can memory jokes, can you joke, then concession in tax. These are all things you come just virtue of your being born years and years ago. You get concession in income tax. You get a discount in income tax. You get birth reservation. So when you go there, you are Ningana in the birth of Gadata. So you find you get lower birth. All you have to do is then as soon as he comes in asking, Napa, if you do you mind Janika Pad Bat Kutu Kang in the Gadra. Oh, that's okay. Be quick, get it. So you will get it. There's no problem. And then seat in buses, you get seat in buses. And then uh, in the airport, you find wheelchair in airports. Of course, we all abuse that privilege. I have seen some people who 
very fit couple. Sometimes the couple they book it the airport because it is very easy. You sit in an airport, wheelchair, then he takes you right to the front of the queue, and then everything check, 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 everything given, <laughs> and you are free to travel and do whatever shopping you want to do. And so I, I once I remember the Coimbatore in London airport or somewhere, one couple came along. I know them in Coimbatore, and I have seen them walking briskly in race course area, and they both were coming in yet. In an accident, I put a yeah, tongue in my cheek. <laughs> they are so embarrassed. Can both those fellows can push a wheelchair. But then some little abuse there. And then respect for the old automatically. My aunt once went by train to Bombay, and her son, my cousin, he forgot to give her the ticket and went home. And so she was there. And uh, he, she found that she had money, of course, in the trunk and all that. She didn't carry parts at all. And so she didn't know what to do. The ticket examiner came. You, do you believe it? She was very vibhuti and all widow and uh, looking absolutely like Abhaya. And so she said, Tarawal in the pity at Kurkrina, the Panavichi Kendana. Party, you come and go. Then immediately a collection was made. And they said, I'm Bombay. This kind of immediate thing, response you get. And whenever there's too much of noise, you can shut off by taking off your ears. Nice. Avoiding functions like meetings, marriages, minor functions, funerals and all. You know, you they don't expect you. Suppose somebody dies and they expect you to pass on the condolence, but not, they're not certainly expect Minor functions, you know, some uh, whatever you call. Uh, give me an example of minor function. Sumangali Whatever. So you, you don't go. Freedom in dress. You can wear a superman dress. To be taken as a joke, joke or a jolly old man. And you, sometimes you go, my wife says, she has look at my shut front and you can tell the menu, little avial here, sambar here, all forgiven. And then my make my wife not listen. You can stare at an old man, a young woman. You see, you won't be misunderstood. Young woman won't misunderstand you. Tata, I love word of mine, she will ask. But you can stare, you are not misunderstood. You can sing awfully, just say, as I did now, or you can dance and uh, you can find that uh, New Year dance in Kramutu Club. I used to think that many old people, somebody started dancing New Year, heralding New Year. And you can give prolonged talk and people out of politeness will keep quiet. Audiences remain out of respect. Nobody will shout at you if you, have, if you do something which uh, happens because they are afraid you may get a heart attack or something. They are generally very polite. So, why is that? You? So, these are all automatic advantages that you get. And Something which, fortunately, I hope it doesn't happen to any of us. You are never held as hostage. Suppose your airplane is uh, uh, taken over by terrorists and they are having a hostage situation. The whole people will be first allowed to go away. Because, you know, otherwise every five minutes, that all will say, go here, there, and all. So it's better for them to get rid of. Like the only, the, then only the mothers with children are released. I mean, if you have something idiosyncratic, some idiotic idea, that you hold on all your lifetime. Nobody will argue it. They think, you know, he has had it for about 50 years. He's not going to change. And so no use arguing with him. And so that way you take an advantage. And uh, so like that, you find, uh, uh, that's what you find. It's so advantageous automatically that they come. And now, what's the time now I have, um, President? Exceeded your time. One number. What do you mean? How much time I have? Can you tell me? Hello? You have 10 more minutes, sir. You have 10, 10 more Yeah. Okay, okay. I feed you 10 minutes. 10 minutes is fine. That's right. And so, creative activities to enhance your quality of life. First, learn to enjoy nostalgia. People will criticize you. And oh, Tata Arabistare, Tripakadesh Alvare. You keep on the old people get a bad name because they keep on reciting the same thing, repeat the same thing, and repeat it to the same fellow. And most often they are the same man is living in the same room. And so this is the problem. And so they, you find that nostalgia is good. It is not necessary. You should express it to somebody. So you must start a nostalgia album. Keep your photo there. Keep some things that you used in the olden days, you know, even if you have some old powder or you get an old shaving set, things like that, which will give you nice memory. Photographic albums are great for nostalgia. You suddenly find you get back into olden times. And what does it do with you? And you find 
which improves your sociability. And you can talk to people if you are very sensible and balance what you tell people. You find old people with good nostalgia, narrate old time incidents. And so it helps them to live, relive. And when they think of the, the role that I've played in their life, they have so many places and how they are so important to so many people and they have, how they have had a meaningful existence. So it gives a meaning to your existence all along, especially when you feel old, when you're depressed, you are avoided by people and you are feeling depressed, jump into this nostalgia thing and then you read. And, and this you find is very important and uh, you make it makes it interesting. Suppose, suppose you have a nice tale to tell younger people, so note it down somewhere. No, you know, tell them, this is what happened. I remember travel, once I went from Tritsi to Putu, this is what happened. Things like that, you know. When many things happen, remember all that and write it down. Both present and if you, old women, sometimes tell old songs, they'll sing the old songs. Some Tamil songs, you know, old movie, our party, they'll tell folk tones and all that, folk tales and all that. They remember only this. They don't remember what happened yesterday, our neighbor's name, that may be. But they remember old times. And they tell it to the grandchildren. And so the grandchild suddenly gets a link, a bridge to the old times of the early 20th century. You see, so she tells them about the kind of life they led, how the family was, what her father was like, and how did they employ servants, and what were the taboos in the house, what are the things that are they celebrated, how was Saraswati Puja celebrated, things like that. So the little child, nearly 70 years apart, sits back and listens. And so it binds, gives old values. You sing some old songs that used to be sung. I remember some songs my mother used to sing that apparently came down from generation to generation. You know, Nanda Vadrithulo and Nalari, Madhamai Koryavane Vendi. All this my mother used to sing. I remember that. And so that is one thing. And then this is how nostalgia helps. Start a nostalgia thing and keep, when you have friends, bring them over. Don't tell them to will always be given permission to get your old friend, talk about the olden times. There's nothing like, you discuss Lakshmi Kantan case, a Thakar Adama was getting arrested. Things like that, you know, old Arya Mala. Whatever it is, it makes you suddenly full of life. And the second thing you should do is, I believe this should be done, is to write your autobiography. <laughs> Some of you are saying, hey, that's what are you joking? Who is going to read my autobiography? Nobody. Nobody will read your autobiography unless you have, you are a very eminent person, I believe. And you have a great writer, Shiva Sumari is one of your uh, uh, members. And somebody like us will write, will sell thousands of copies. But you and I will write our autobiography. Just for the pleasure of writing our autobiography, reliving the old days. Nobody will buy it, doesn't matter. Don't write it for others. Print yourself 100 copies. And whenever somebody comes, give it to him. And one of my friends does this. He has done it also. Nobody has read his autobiography. I think he read it for the last time. And so I asked him, yeah, So he gives it to all the fellows who come. It's almost a condition for making enjoying his dinner. And so, right, something like that, it brings you back to old times. And then you uh, uh, be ready to receive people from younger age group. Talk to them. Don't address. Please don't advise unless they want it. All old people think it is our right, our duty, and the, our mandate to advise people. No, there's no need to. Just listen. If they ask for an advice, advice. Or if you want to make some slap, slap, tangential comment, make it some. That's, that's okay. Do that. And be ready to receive knowledge, advice from younger people. We all think that we have become all the so, the ultimate wisdom has been recent. Nobody is going to tell you, oh my God, my grandson can teach me things mm -hmm. about computer. I will not be able to learn in this genre. So much knowledge he's got. And so, listen to them. Ask them what is it? What is it? Tell them, no, these fellows are giants. If you look at some of their books, we were astonished at the amount of knowledge they have. So, listen, listen to them. And intelligently, ask people who come to younger people, things like that. We learn, they have to give you information. As long as you learn, your brain is active, you are not going to get old. And uh, as I said, uh, be ready and don't criticize. Don't criticize people, please. This is my advice as a very old man. I'm probably older than most of the audience here. Don't give advice because 
the advice is something that you usually resent it unless it's asked for. If you yourself think that on account of your extraordinary wisdom, you are in a position to deliver advice and improve the world, it doesn't matter. So give advice only if you are asked for it. And then give it. And uh, then give it silently. And give usually advice. Somebody is in passing is asking for advice. You know he's not going to follow it up. Then find out what he is wanting and give that as advice. You say, tomorrow you say, Tata Sonara, Bia Sonara, he's very happy. You can do that. And then uh, give compliments. I don't know, many of our people, I, I noticed, don't give compliments. You, you listen to something, somebody that some child sang for you, and somebody comes and shows you the progress report, or somebody has done something nice with some balls or whatever it is, or created a robot with some you know, Lego or something. Just shower them with child. I mean, you may say, it's not lying. The child with his inspiration, inspiration has done something nice and we want you to show it to somebody. She thinks he's a, he a, he a very epitome of wisdom. So give that. And so the, my last advice is laugh. Keep smiling. Unfortunately, when we get old, nature puts a mudra, makes your face look old. So smile. The more you smile, the more the face remains like that. So smile at people, talk to them. Try to be a little jolly with these people. And the best advice is when you find the drama is going on around you. you know, new dramas are sort of being installed and people are all acting their own lives, their own drama. Just watch. Just sit back and watch. Don't separate dialogue. Don't try to direct. Don't tell them this is what should be done. Maybe if you're asked how this drama is to be staged, go ahead. Give. Otherwise, just sit back and laugh. Nicely applaud, and the drama is over. The pat, wherever some patting is to be done, do the patting, and then you find at the end of the drama, every evening, they will take you out to dinner and give you the best food, Tata Bars. So, I thank you very much for your patience listening. This advantage of this kind of virtual meeting. I'm if I bored you, I would know. Maybe I would know if you are laughing, but that is sad. But if I vote, I would know that is a plus point. And so thank you very much for the great opportunity. Tata Ram Shekhar, everybody. Thanks a lot. And if anybody has any questions, I'm most happy to answer if I know the answer. Thank you, Doctor. It was a very lively presentation. We enjoyed. And uh, you could very easily make us feel, forget our age, at your age. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I take your advice. Don't advise. Huh. I take your advice. Don't yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. And uh, I would like to just put one question to you. Please, please. Um, that is, in the human body, as I know, is made of skin, bones, uh, muscles, nerves, our central nervous system. Which one of these uh, starts aging early? Which one ages fast and uh, ages early? Is there any correlation uh, in that? Yes, you know, it will depend, first of all, on your thin genes, you know. Suppose you come up a family of diabetics and blood pressure patients and cardiac disease patients, cholesterol high patients, you will find these are the systems that are usually the targeted by this disease will probably start aging. Diabetes, that's a situation called pre-diabetes. Before the diabetes itself, the person starts having some symptoms which can be referred to as pre-diabetic state, like nerve pains and things like that. And so the second thing is how you sort of utilize the body given to you. This is very important. How you handle the equipment you have been handed over. The, depending on that, your wear tire will happen. Suppose you are one of those who is very laid back, sit back all the time, do hardly doing exercise. Most of the time, your brain work is doing. You find you are going to sort of the uh, fat is going to precipitate and places where you find the gravity works best. And so you find some of these things, say, system will get affected first, and then. About you're asking whether lung will be affected or heart will be affected, things like that. I don't think there is any standard formula that bodies follow. It all depends on the genetic makeup, the knowing your RNA, DNA, as they say. So that will decide plus how, what way you use your put it to. That will decide how you are going to um, regenerate. But in general, giving a perfect man, textbook man. And this man has done the right thing right to the life. And now which system will start regenerating? There is no such thing as some system faster than lesser. No. 
it will all degenerate simultaneously. And so given your luck, your brain may be the last to degenerate. You, given your luck, you may be demented at the age of 50. You do not know. And so I don't think there is anything you can put a hard and fast rule. But if you nurture your body properly, if you take care of it and exercise it, and put all the organs to use, you don't abuse it with smoke and alcohol and drugs and all that kind of thing, you find that you will preserve it. Nature intended that the human animal should have an age span of 120. Most of us destroy ourselves earlier. And so if you use it properly and pokisha, you yeah. should take care of the pokisha and you will live. Keep I'm, it I'm happy about one thing. You are repeatedly saying you have to take care of your body. Yes. In that statement, in that statement, I'm able to find that you stand apart from the body. So that is the philosophical attitude which has come into our language naturally. Thank you for that. Yeah. But the only thing is when you get old and you are taking care of your body, please don't fall. <laughs> you, old people fall. Gravity is our enemy. And so they keep falling for various reasons. They expect they are going to stumble and fall. Never. They may just fall magically. And so make sure that your whole bathroom is full of non-skid mats. If somebody says, doctor says, please use a walking stick or a walker, use the walker. He's not dealing with walking still the sales. So please use the walker. You expect that you will fall. Because sooner or later, you will fall. Okay. Yes. Doctor. Sir, yes, sir. They can, they can unmute themselves. Uh, permission. Uh, doctor. Shall I proceed? Doctor. Yes. Uh, I got a doubt. I, as I told you, Allopathy plus uh, humoropathy is equal to nestopathy. <laughs> Are there any humorist physicians uh, in India and abroad? I mean humorist physicians, not humorist at all, like you. Are there any humorist physicians in India, in Tamil Nadu, in India or abroad? Humorist doctor. Uh, yes. Doctor, you should be a doctor. I should be a humorist. No, do you want I don't find anything. Uh, I want a doctor. Who is also a humorist? Oh, there, there used to be one K.P. Mishra, he's no more. Uh, he was actually in Apollo Hospital, very funny man. There are quite a few. Mm. And, uh, mm. you know, generally to talk humor, I, there are a mm. number of doctors who in their meetings come and tell jokes, you know. I think telling jokes is okay, it's a, the motive is good. But generally the result is because they tell an old joke, they already known and all that. But doctors who try to be funny, and uh, look at the funnier angle of practice of patients and all that. Not a great man. Not a great some man. Of some of the doctors, some of the doctors threaten the patients, but you don't threaten. You simply smile away. The other one, you have mentioned in your book, humorologists and humorists. The humorologist huh. tries to discover why people lost, whereas yeah. the humorist tries to discover why they are not laughing. Please explain. Please. Mm -hmm. Explanatory. Yeah, explain. Oh, explain, explain. Oh, humorologist. You know, humorologist is somebody who goes into the very nature of humor. What makes people laugh? Where is the sleep the humor center located? Which are the animals which are capable of laughing? And things like that, you know, the anatomy, the physiology, the pathology of laugh, humor. And so these people are very serious people because they are scientists. And so they give I mean, importance to science of humor rather than thinking of something else. And so you find they are fairly boring. Humorologists are generally boring. Like, uh, you know, somebody wanted to know how the frog is able to jump so high. And so they, they, they cut, you cut open the frog and could find that it has got tight muscles disproportionately thick. And so that is why the frog is able to jump six feet in the air and all that. But the frog died. And so in the quest of the origin of humor, of the frogs jumping, it destroyed. And so if you analyze humor, you find that it's a death knell for humor. A humorist is somebody who finds that uh, there is humor in everything. He likes to laugh. He looks at the funny angle to life itself. Uh, he's a, a step superior to philosopher. So he's considered younger brother of philosopher because a philosopher laughs at life, you know, and he thinks the best way to tackle life is to sort of understand the futility of it. To know that art matter, what does not die is your atma, things like that. And everything, how everything perishes at some stage. And all this kind of thing is what the philosopher comes saying that this is how you will be able to live happily. And no philosopher 
has ever managed, right from Lord Krishna's Bhagavad Gita, right down to Osho, nobody has managed to make people forget the misery of life. Whereas, humorous things, but there's a joke in everything. Everything has got a funny aspect. And so life is itself something a little flip. And don't take it too seriously. Especially don't take yourself seriously. And so uh, the humorist says that I can't change life. I can't change people. He's, so the best thing for me is to joke with them, laugh with them. And when the time comes to go, no, it is time to go. It is. You wanted to ask something? Yes. Yeah. Doctor? Yes. And a very excellent speech. Thank you. Tamil, you have a good idea of the Vaisana Vaya, Appu Sami Sita Pati. Right, right, I know. Appu Sami Sita Pati. You said that level. Thank you. Uh, coming to the subject aspect, how yeah. yoga, the yoga practice, how do you help agent people? How do you do it? Can we undertake some yoga practice now? Yes, I think yeah. yoga is such a void. Science, you know, it a, a sort of caters to people of all ages, people with all kinds of distress, people who are super health, who will want to improve their health, maintain their health for everything. So there are yogic exercises that are meant for old people to improve certain systems they have in the body. But only thing is, yogi people who teach yoga are not doctors, basically. Unless they, they practice some uh, Ayurveda or something. In which case, you will have to go into that territory totally. I cannot advise. But if you ask me, can I do yoga? Yes, you certainly can. But it should be sort of curtailed in its range by the state of your health. Suppose you've got heart disease, let us say, and you've got congestive failure, or you've got ischemic heart attack, or you had a stroke, things like that. Yoga should be geared to make sure that misled by some yoga pure unadulterated yoga teacher, you don't sort of aggravate yourself. So he must be told, he's a good teacher. Most modern yoga teachers take into uh, sort of account your state of health. So <laughs> you will be able to do that. So ask them whether I can do this. For example, if there's some neck pain or something, you, he says do sarsasa. It'll be fatal. You may not get up at all. And so things like that can happen. So make sure that your doctor permits you, show him that yeah, yoga techniques that you have been advised and do that. But they will help. Given by a learned proper yoga teacher, if you do what they say in measured terms and slowly increase your dosage, you find great help. Thank you, Doctor. One, one more thing, one more thing I appreciate is the advantage of uh, old age is you can stare at any young lady at your ad advantage is what yes. I would like to enjoy and practice also. Thank you. Ah, right, right, okay. No matter. But don't expect the world lazy to enjoy your love stand. <laughs> the great writer, Madam Sivashankari, I think she wants to ask. Oh, I'm delighted. Yes, honor. Well, I'm not Please, such on Madam. my video because I've undergone an eye surgery, so I don't want to show myself. Okay. But um, it was a very nice talk, very uh, not only interesting, informative. And um, thank you very much for uh, adding so much of the Advanda and the Sariana Sapatla, Sariana Masala, Purapla, the humor and Nanga Porta, Romba, you made it very interesting. If you permit now, a few points I'm going to last to the ad for Lan Nanikara. We must either Vaisana Vala and Nana Mudu Oka Ramana Mana Panoy, in the Vitla number come on the Vitla, Chinachina help Alana Pantra to wall in Tripano. And the weight of the number one, the Napa Palm went over at a bar. Now go other walk out home. Look, one tell the Talavar at a bar, end of a ketama. See, Yenali, the member of Kanta, they never could have a little panala, not on the Napa Valley Panala. But Yenaka and Naria by one day, Yenala and Namudio, Abino or Madri or depressed her, other participation record on a field pandre, or accept predicate on a participation. Then the one day. Now, my expectations are wise and work for Chikono Nanikre. Now that I am 78, I think I'm qualified to say this. My youngsters could tell you my expectations. I could have disappointments because Namma way of living and their way of living, our priorities and their priorities, Yella Mar or Rumba Yerke. It's very natural. Expectation, it doesn't work these days. 
இந்த காலத்துல பிள்ளைவா நிறைய பேர் சைக்கலாஜிக்கலா மென்டலா எமோஷனலா தங்களை நாற்பது வயசுல இருந்து பிரிப்பேர் பண்ணிட்டு வரணும்னு நான் நினைக்கிறேன் அண்ட் ஃபைனலி வி ஷுட் ஸ்டாப் பீங் ஜட்மெண்டல் நம்ம வந்து எல்லாத்துக்கும் உட்காந்துட்டு வயசாயிட்டு தீர்ப்பு சொல்லக்கூடாது அது ஐ டோன்ட் திங்க் இட் ஒர்க் அட் ஆல் யூ சி ஸோ நம்ம ஜ நான் ஜட்மெண்டலா இருந்து அக்காமடேட்டிவா இருந்து எக்ஸ்பெக்டேஷன்ஸ் குறைச்சிருந்து அதே சமயத்துல நம்மளுடைய நாற்பது வயசுல இருந்து பிகாஸ் old age is not an accident illaya yeah, doctor it comes day by day towards you if you are living unless you go by an accident you die or a durmarnam irundala oliya day by day it is telling me i am coming near you i am coming near you namba porandadilende sollendirukku so 40 vayasu aanapurume namma nammala prepare panikkanum naan nenikiren economically prepare panikkanum நமக்குன்னு கொஞ்சம் வச்சுக்கணும் எல்லாத்தையும் எடுத்து குழந்தைகளுக்கு பண்ணணும் இல்ல என்னோட எதிர்காலத்துக்குன்னு வச்சுக்கா பிகாஸ் பினான்சியல் செக்யூரிட்டி கிவ்ஸ் லாட் ஆஃப் ஸ்ட்ரென்த் இட்ஸ் அ மொரே பூஸ்டர் நான் பார்த்தாச்சு பணத்துக்கு ஒருத்தட்ட டிபெண்ட் பண்ணாம நம்ம இக்கனாமிக்கலி இண்டிபெண்டா இருந்தோம்னா நம்மள கொஞ்சம் மரியாதையும் கூட கிடைக்கிறது அது ஒண்ணு ரெண்டாவது சைக்கலாஜிக்கலா நான் வந்து என் பிள்ளை பார்த்துப்பா பொண்ணு பார்த்துப்பா நான் அவளோட தான் இருப்பேன்னு அந்த டிபெண்டன்சி கூடாது அது நாற்பது வயசுல இருந்தே நம்ம வந்து இக்கனாமிக் இண்டிபெண்டன்ஸ் சைக்கலாஜிக்கல் டிபெண்டன்சி கூடாது அப்புறம் முக்கியமா என்னோட ஹெல்த் நீங்க அழகா சொன்னேன் முன்ன இருக்கிற ஜெனரேஷன் இல்லாம இப்ப நம்ம நல்ல எல்லாருமே ஹெல்த் அவேர்னஸ் இருக்கு ஹவு வி ஹவ் பிகம் வெரி ஹெல்த் அவேர்னு சொன்னேன் நீங்க அந்த மாதிரி நாற்பது வயசுல இருந்து எங்க அம்மாலாம் வாக்கு எல்லாம் போனதே கிடையாது மேலஸ் நான் ஜிம் போற வரைக்கும் என்ன ட்ரெயின் பண்ணேன் அந்த மாதிரிதான் என் ஜென்ரேஷன்ஸ் எல்லாரும் இருக்கா நிறைய பேர் வாக் போறது இட் ஹஸ் பிகம் அ மாஸ்ட் யோகா பண்றது வயசு கூட கேட்டார் யோகா பண்ணலாமான்னு ஐ திங்க் இதெல்லாம் நம்ம எல்லாருக்குமே இப்போ ஒரு ஆல்மோஸ்ட் ருட்டீனாவே ஆயின் இருக்கு விச் இஸ் வெரி குட் வெரி குட் ஸோ அந்த மாதிரி எல்லா விதத்துலயும் நாற்பது வயசுலேருந்து ப்ரிப்பேர் பண்ணிட்டு வந்து நம்மள நம்மளோட சென்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஹியூமரை விடாம நான் சொன்ன மாதிரி எக்ஸ்பெக்டேஷன் எக்ஸ்பெக்டேஷன் இல்லாம நான் ஜட்மெண்டலா இருந்து முடிஞ்ச வரைக்கும் ஹெல்ப் பண்ணிட்டு இருந்தோம்னா ஐ திங்க் ஒரு ஸ்மைல் ஃபேஸ்ல வச்சுட்டு இருந்தோம்னா ஐ திங்க் தட் மேக்ஸ் யுவர் ஓல்ட் ஏஜ் வெரி என்ஜாயபிள் நாட் ஓன்லி டு யுவர் செல்ஃப் டு எவ்ரி படி I mean, actually, I can speak probably for about four to five hours of genetics. No, I did not give all of it. You know, some of these things can be depressing. Suppose I say somebody, economically, you should make sure that you're okay. And he's already 75 years old. You know, it can be very depressing because the poor man has not made it. So, and I'll use some other things you said. It's a little bit of a dependence for charge in 40th year, not in the 70th year. Absolutely correct. There's no question at all. Economic dependence is so important. And so often, I have known children sort of uh, deprive the parents of their life saving saying that in pannu kala and karan kudu come and all that kind of thing and it really disaster i have advised many parents who come to me at par i said never give up your money your hold on your money because you never know when you are going to need it so it is really important and nobody should do like that doctor i find one of the students in the panel I don't know whether he had asked questions to you when he was a student in the class, but at least now he can. Dr. Giri. Oh, yeah. I agree. <laughs> Sir? Yes, uh, yes, Giri. How are you? Sir, I have... Today's my day is made in my mm-hmm. lifetime. Oh, yeah. How are you, sir? Giri, Giri is a very sweet fellow. He is a diabetologist. Oh. <laughs> Hello, sir. Advice Kuruka Kuraga is number one. you should hold your money with you is number 2 idu irundave poru sir old age la happy a irukalam that's good appra the best thing is our gene if your yeah. father lived 85 mother lived 88 then psychologically you should feel happy that i will also live up to 85 that psychological boost will make you more happy and more longevity that is true that is one person here who has to say something ah please aging is depressive yeah. <laughs> And disability also. Um, ah. I, our uh, great H. Ramakrishnan, Mr. H. Ramakrishnan, uh, oh. I don't know whether he would like to add a few words and ask a question or something. Welcome. If he is willing to do, he can unmute his mic and do that. To whom are you addressing, sir? Mr. H. Ramakrishnan. Ah, I am, sir. Yes, sir. No, no, no. Uh, and, and I am one year 
ஏதையுமே குறைச்சிக்க வேண்டாம் ஓல்டேஜ்ல தட் இஸ் மை வியூ ஏதையுமே குறைச்சிக்க வேண்டாம் யூ ஜஸ்ட் லிவ் யுவர் லைஃப் யுவர் ஓன் லைஃப் விச் யூ ஹேவ் பின் லிவிங் ஆல் தீஸ் இயர்ஸ் சாப்பாடு குறைச்சிக்கோங்க that is my my uh, my formula for oh, japan like there was a centenarian japan in japan ah. a, a centenarian and some pressman went to interview him yes. so they asked him what is the secret of your longevity hmm. and uh, he said i don't drink i don't smoke i i i i have not looked at any woman excepting at my wife that yes. now uh, there was some uh, Um, a problem upstairs some noise was heard of uh-huh. somebody throwing out uh, things stairs and tables and things like that then they asked him who, what is happening there no no he is my father he is a drunkard uh-huh. uh, he is a chain smoker and he is a womanizer this is life sir uh-huh. this is life i uh-huh. think we should not stop anything in our life and enjoy it fully till you breathe your last I agree. We accept it. What you enjoy is for the people. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Dr. Geeta, you want to say something? If there is no other question, then I think we can uh, close the meeting. I'll talk to you. Previous, can we? டாக்டர் The okay. horror of the late Kushan Chen. The other one is Victory of Spiritual Medicine, forward given by Shashit Tharoor. My, my, my observation, sir, there are more, more doctor's jokes around than people who are joking doctors. More doctor's <laughs> jokes than joking doctors. So there is a rich effort. One more compliment to Dr. Lakshmi Padhi. I don't want to miss it. Ravi will accept with me. Doctor is singing very well. Yeah. உங்கண்டில் நீர் வழிந்தால் நிஜமாவே நல்ல அதாவது சார் நான் சொல்றேன் ரவி நகர் இசையிலே உட்கார்ந்து இருப்போம் நீங்க கொஞ்சம் பாடினா கூட அந்த அந்த ராகத்தையும் அதனுடைய நொவான்சஸ் நைசிட்டிஸ் மிஸ் பண்ணல நீங்க சோகமா பாண்டது எங்களுக்கு ருச்சியா இருந்தது அது மட்டும் இல்ல அவர் சில விஷயம் சில விஷயங்களை சொன்ன போது தெரிஞ்சது அவர் என்னெல்லாம் என்னெல்லாம் is there any call no i don't think so i think it is depends on the the person the person become cynical or even uh, at younger age <laughs> some people do some people do get a bit more cynical but you will notice that this is not a trait that has developed in old age this is something that has been shaped and formulated and sort of given finishing touches yeah yeah that's right exactly exactly okay thank you all and thanks doctor for sharing your very valuable time with us Thank you for the opportunity. I enjoy talking to you. Thank you. And enjoy the discussion. Thank you. So like we can close the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks sir. Come on sir. Come on now. Come on later on there. Ravi. Later on there. Pat. நான் ஒரு அவார்டை வாங்கிட்டு வந்தேன் ரவி அதனால தான் நான் லேட்டா வந்தேன் ரவி சாரி குட் வாட் அவார்ட் தி விமன்ஸ் டே காரம் சாச்சி பெரிய வரலாம் குட் கன்ஃபர்ம்